Hey, everybody, and welcome to the O365 Pulse. We have Adam here with us today. Tom should be back, I think, uh, next week or the following week, but uh, super excited. He's having a great uh, vacation here, but we don't have too many updates today, but we will go ahead and get started with them. We're going to start out with uh, what's in development. I'll hit one off and then I'll toss it over to Adam. But one thing that we have in development is Outlook uh, for Android. Android Outlook for Android <laughs> company add in for third party online meetings. So that's something that they have in development. Also, inking on photos for Android, uh, play my emails uh, for Android. So that would be something where you can go in and I guess save time if you're just sitting there. It tried to do that for me on iOS this last week. It was like, you've been away from your phone for a while. Would you like to play your emails? I did not play my emails, but that is something um, that you could do where it will play through and read your emails to you, try to save you time and um, uh, different things there. So Adam, I'll, I'll toss it over to you and see if you um, have some. Yeah, I'll just say too, on. I did like the third-party add-ins. It's stuff like Zoom and WebEx and GoToMeetings. So uh, at my old company for the longest time, like we had GoToMeetings for a while, then I had Zoom for a while. So even though they were pretty bought into Office 365, they didn't actually use Teams for meetings because they had existing contracts with other providers. Um, so I like seeing Microsoft being willing to acknowledge that as a scenario and giving some integrations for other points. I know if I was still at my old company, I'd love having the ability to have that integration directly from Outlook being able to launch those different meeting applications. So just wanted to give a shout out to that. I did think that was really cool. Um, one of the things that I thought was pretty cool when we go through, um, we talked a little bit before in the past about the idea of uh, cross-channel posting. Um, so if you're going through and you're in Microsoft Teams, you actually have the ability to post the message and go to multiple different channels. So say you know you had a marketing team and you had a whole bunch of different groups or a whole bunch of different channels inside the marketing team that went through, but you wanted to send a message out to all of marketing. Well, a little bit ago, they added the functionality for you to do this. Um, I didn't realize this. Once you did it, you were committed. There was no editing or anything like that. Well, they realized that's probably a problem, so they're actually working now on developing the ability for users to go through, and once you've posted that cross-channel message, being able to go back and edit it to say you notice a typo or something like that. Uh, you can also actually go through and choose which channels you're doing. So rather than saying, I want everyone on the side of the marketing team, you can go through and say, oh, I want to do just these certain people or not these other people. So you can have a little bit more of a targeted audience there. So kind of happy to see that. I think these of the types of stuff that are going to bring a little bit more enterprise functionality and stuff going through. So just happy to see that development. Um, that's targeted for March of this year. So another month yet, but still happy to see this changes being developed or being acknowledged at least. Yeah, totally. Um, one that I think is really, really awesome is the Microsoft 365 usage reports are going to add some more administrator roles. And so what's really great about that is if you're in a larger organization or even if you're in, in an organization that divides certain things up by certain tasks, you may want someone to see uh, the usage in one area, but not another, or you want uh, to divvy that up. So the usage reports are going to have those different administrator roles, and they're going to have them for Power BI. You're going to have them for Microsoft Graft API, Global Administrator, Exchange Administrator, SharePoint Administrator, uh, Teams Administrator, Global Reader, Reports Reader, different things there. So they're adding some additional administrator roles to help you really drill down into that content. And it's so important for you to drill down into that content. And it's not really about usage. It's, it doesn't really matter who's using it, but it's it's who's using it to accomplish things, right? That's why you're looking at usage reports. Are they using it to accomplish uh, productivity? Are they able to do these things? That's what the only reason you're really looking at the usage reports. It doesn't matter really are they using the features. The features only matter for usage. Are are they being productive? Um, so it's it's a great way to be able to do that. And as we start looking at different things moving forward, that one's going to be super, super important. Um, yeah. Oh, all yeah, right. So, so in honor of Tom, I'm going to actually do a SharePoint one. I'll um, go for it. Because <laughs> I thought this is actually really cool, and this is something that actually does speak to me pretty directly. Um, so SharePoint list and document libraries. So right now, if you go through to work on them, you actually have to go in and then hit the edit button to go in and edit the information you want. Makes sense going through and how you had to deal with it, but they're basically trying to make it more user-friendly. And as an end user who does interact with these um, 
different resources. I think this is really cool. They're basically going to let you edit the metadata of those document libraries or those lists directly from the page that you're viewing the list on. So you pull up to a SharePoint list. There's all the different columns that you have the ability to fill in. You're no longer going to have to hit the edit button and go through and pull up like directly like dive into the list and go through and make the edits. Mm -hmm. You can actually from the page that you're viewing the list, go through and make edits directly. I actually think this is a huge UI functionality upgrade. I think it's really cool. And I think it makes it um, more than anything, just more friendly to new end users because they don't have to wor uh, learn the intricacies of how they go through and manage the different types of data. It's just, they go in, they can work at that directly where they're going through and seeing it. I think it makes it much more user friendly, especially like I said, for those new users. Uh, so in honor of time, um, wanted to talk about that and think it's a really, really cool update. I love it. And then the last one we can have an in development is one of my favorite SharePoint list from Excel. Very easily bring in a new SharePoint list from Excel. If you've been to a demo in the last year and you've heard oohs and ahs in the audience, it's usually because someone took this ridiculous Excel file, took it into SharePoint and said, control V. And then, wow, it's a SharePoint list and it actually worked. And they had this really cute feature um, in previous versions of SharePoint where you could end port a list from Excel, but let's be honest, it only ever worked in a demo and it never really worked in the real world. So I called it one of those cute features. Um, this new feature actually works really well every time I've seen it um, in demos and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to see that there. I know they've been working really hard on it. And so the capabilities look fantastic. So that's something that's in development um, and should be coming to us really soon. So I'm excited excited about those features. So now we're moving to the rolling out. Um, a reminder for rolling out. Rolling out means that it's coming and coming soon. Um, this means it will not be on every tenant. Uh, this is a reminder even for Adam and I this morning when we were talking about one of these features that uh, I potentially wanted to show off to somebody and I had him go and check in a tenant. It's not in that tenant. So rolling out means it started the rolling out process, but it has not made it to every tenant. It's rolling out in waves, and as soon as it reaches all waves, it will hit that launch category. So, Adam, I'll let you go ahead and start with that feature that got you this morning. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, it's one of those things, too. You see this every now and then on the roadmap, so I'm sure if you guys are going through and reviewing the content we have, you see this sometimes, too. And it makes it confusing. This feature that I'm going to talk about is listed under rolling out. And one with almost the same functionality and same name is also listed this time under launched. And I think what it basically comes down to is based on the specific functionality that you're looking at, it might be launched some places and still rolling out. But anyways, um, what we're actually talking about is SharePoint and Microsoft Teams new file experience. Um, this is a really, really cool thing and something that when I went through, I was like, oh, that seems really, really neat and went through and tested yeah. it out and I could see. So basically, it'll give you the ability to manage files in Microsoft Teams or SharePoint. Um, that really bring the power of what you're used to having if you're a Power SharePoint user from document libraries that you've had for some time. So we all probably know the file experience in Teams is actually built on top of SharePoint. Well, you're now starting to see some of the more advanced enterprise features that SharePoint you know, brought to bear to being surfaced and being developed to work inside of Teams. So I'm talking about stuff like add and manage custom columns, sort and filter files with custom views, trigger workflows directly off of those files, and sync files to your PC or Mac. Um, the last one specifically, I, I seem to have gotten a request a lot from clients and from coworkers too. Hey, I work out of this team all the time. This is the main project that I'm managing. I would just love to have these files somewhere on my computer. So every time I need to look at it, I don't need to go through and you know find the team and go through and manage it that way. Um, really, you were able to do this before. You just had to be smart and know what you're doing and going on the back end of the SharePoint side to do it, but happy to see them making this experience readily accessible and easy to do directly up into Teams. A uh, caveat, just make sure if you are syncing it from Teams, you don't just decide, hey, I don't need this anymore and I'm going to chain delete everything off of my computer. That is not the correct path to go and you will cause problems. Um, but other than <laughs> that, really, really cool to see the feature coming out. And uh, like I said, one that kind of stuck out to me when we saw it uh, listed there, because I think it's something that a lot of people will like and a lot of people will use. Yeah, awesome. Well, some that I see coming out to rolling out, exciting, is the SharePoint Adder, Adderm. I'm I'm not able to say these common words today. SharePoint Admin, Modern Term Store, and Analytics Dashboard. I get, again, this is one of those 
first steps and what's coming with the modern experiences across content terms, uh, content sets, all of these different things that are coming. So there's an updated term store to create and manage term sets. Um, I think this is one of the areas to watch this year. If you've been listening at all to anything Project Cortex, this is the area to watch. Uh, so super excited about this and everything that's coming there. So that would be one to watch. Another one that as a consultant and someone who works across many organizations that is near and dear to our heart, probably not near and dear to as many organizations or agencies hearts is the organization switcher in Microsoft 365 and the admin center that's going to allow you to toggle between different uh, tenants that you manage. Believe it or not, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's an exciting piece of something that's coming coming there as well. I think a lot of the other ones we've kind of talked about on other shows, but Adam, do you have any others that are here um, uh, that you kind of want to talk through? I'll give a shout out. This will be real quick. Um, both Outlook for iOS and Outlook for Android have privacy control updates. All this is really doing is bringing the level of reporting data that they do on par with the other desktop apps that you typically have on your computer. Uh, but the reason I'm giving this a shout out is because this morning, um, whenever I got up and I was, you know, going and brushing my teeth and getting ready for the day, <laughs> because I'm a workaholic, the first thing I always do is look at my email. And I actually had a little admin notification at the bottom saying that my privacy controls had been updated. Uh, so just giving a shout out to that one because I actually saw that manifest in our own tenant this morning. So uh, you may be seeing that notification if you haven't already soon as well. That's awesome. Well, cool. So moving on to launched. Uh, this means it has launched and it's out in everyone's tenants. I'm going to go ahead and hit up my favorite SharePoint list. Um, so we have a couple of things from SharePoint list that hit that I just think are wonderful. So SharePoint list from list. So this means I can go into a SharePoint list and I can say, ooh, I like this list from over here. I kind of want to make a new list based off of this list and it's going to bring over all the attributes for me. It's a great experience. Not only is it a great experience in terms of I get all the functionality out of it, building it and doing it is so super simple that I think even my mom could do it. It's great. It should be easy to teach people. Um, it's just a great experience. You can also do form customers customization in SharePoint list and libraries. This is fantastic because you can show and hide fields. This is something you can do from the properties pane. You don't have to go all the way into uh, Power Apps, but if you want to, you can now do Power Apps in SharePoint list and wait for it. SharePoint libraries, because we haven't been able to do that in forever. Um, so now we can do that, which is beautiful. And two more, because they just weren't done with SharePoint lists this week. <laughs> Alternate row formatting, which is wonderful because back in the day we had this wonderful default view that was shaded and it was used all the time because it just made it super easy for you to see every other row. And then it it got lost in the modern view and it was really annoying for people because it was like, I don't have the shaded view. Now I can't easily see. Now you can have it back. Life is good again. And then finally expanded view. Um, I know they try to tell us all this great stuff about how we should have small manageable lists with little columns and that's just not the real world. But now we have this thing called the expanded view with just a click of a button. You can get rid of all of the extra stuff and view and live and work in your data. So um, a super easy, great experience. And so this week they really have just launched some amazing stuff with working with lists. Most of the stuff I will say from an end user experience just kind of shows up and is easy to work with. It's kind of like, oh, what's this new button? It's nothing that's disruptive or difficult to work with. So even though there's a lot of changes to list and libraries, I don't think there's anything that you have to worry about from an end user perspective or anything that you have to be uh, scared or frightened about. It's all super great, easy stuff that I think you're going to be able to easily incorporate into your efficiencies and into your training for your users. So Adam, I know I think I just covered <laughs> practically everything, but you know I love a list. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, a couple ones that I, I liked as well. The first one I really like because you can tell it's been planned for a while. Uh, they have use flow to approve hub site joins. So this actually, the functionality of this feature itself is really cool. It's basically you have a hub site, you're the hub site administrator. Other people want to join their site up to you. Well, you probably know as a hub site administrator whether that site should really fall under your hub. And, you know, hey, I'm marketing. Is this a marketing site or is that really a sales site and it should mm -hmm. rest over? 
over there. Well, they're basically putting in a default template that will use the flow approval process. So if you've, if you've worked with Microsoft Flow, you know how the approval process works. We'll basically send an email that has two buttons that say, do you approve or do you not approve of doing this? So pretty cool. It'll basically give you the ability to not have to be in the admin section of a hub site in order to be able to go through and do this. You'll just get an email to do it. But you can tell this has been planned for a while because they completely rebranded Flow, but it still says Flow in the roadmap. So it, it doesn't say Power Automate here, which I thought was kind of cool. But again, the functionality itself is really, really neat. Um, its sister product also has a new update that's been launched that I thought was really cool. And you'll probably want to throw in your two cents here too, Jen. Um, but basically, Power Apps integration with SharePoint libraries. Um, this one is actually really neat to me. Um, um, without without going into the specific wording of what they're doing, they're basically allowing you to have easier integration if you use Power Apps with uh, default document libraries and stuff that's built into SharePoint. So basically when you go in to develop Power Apps, there'll be templates in there now that easily integrate with document libraries and things like that in SharePoint that allow you to go through and create um, app experiences and, and Power Apps that can be done by someone that's you know not an actual developer um, that can easily integrate with the default processes that you're already using in SharePoint. So they're basically doing this as making the integration between those two easier, which will always welcome that. I think not enough companies today are really taking advantage of what Power Apps can do, and then putting more templates like this out and accessible is going to make that easier. So love to see that as well. And this is something that we could never do in InfoPath. So yeah. you got it there. So that's a that's a really good one. And I think uh, finally closing us out today, we just have one item in canceled. Um, and it kind of carried over from last week because we talked about it last week. It's the only one that stayed for two weeks. But this is your personalized onboarding uh, for OneDrive. I wouldn't worry about this one too much. Uh, the OneDrive team canceled it. They don't have a replacement item for it, but they were trying to come out with a way that when you came on to the first time for OneDrive, it would give you this personalized onboard experience and give you scenarios. And then based on your answers, it would do things uh, based on what they're doing with uh, AI and Project Cortex and all of these other things and where they're going, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I, I think the onboarding experience is pretty simple as it is, and I don't think they need to ask us questions to do things. So I think we just need to watch this space and see what's coming, um, but I think we're fine here. So I wouldn't be too worried about that one uh, getting canceled um, and nothing else is hit canceled. So I think we're in a good space. So um, Adam, have you heard of anything else in the Azure or Office 365 space this week? I really haven't heard uh, too many rumblings. So no, for the most part, everything seems to be pretty steady at this point. We're starting to get, you know, it's still a bit of ways, but we're starting to get to the point where SharePoint conference is not too far away. Uh, so I think we're starting to see the and last build at the same time. It, exactly. So I think we're starting to see the last updates that are going to come out that it wouldn't surprise me if they keep some of the stuff, some of the bigger updates close to the vest. Um, so I kind of think the type of update that we had this week is going to be a little bit more the norm for the next month or so. Um, but definitely like to see some of the ways they're going. Um, I'll just give a shout out my Myself. I love to see some of the updates that are coming around around Power Automate and around Power Apps and stuff like that. Um, the nerd in me that really likes technology feels like those are not utilized enough. And part of the reason I think they're not utilized enough is if, if you're not a nerd, if you're not a geek that likes to go out and play with all the new toys, it can be a little daunting. So seeing some of the upgrades and some of the integrations they're doing, I, I just love to see it. So I'm just going to give a, a big thumbs up to Microsoft with the development way that they're going because I just love to see the path that they're taking some of those. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And I'm excited to see um, all the things coming to government. I feel like they're getting uh, getting up to speed on some of those government things and getting some alignment with some of the other things that are already in uh, the enterprise cloud there. So yeah, Teams is hitting that sweet spot where it's old enough now that it can pass the regulatory and compliance stuff uh -huh. reviews that it had to. So you're starting to see the cool features come out too. Awesome. Well, we will be back uh, next week with another episode of the Office 365 Pulse and give you the latest in the weekly updates with what's going on with the Microsoft Roadmap. And we will see you then. Thank you. Friendly Bye reminder, everybody. buy your loved one's Valentine's Day gifts if you haven't yet. Don't be in the doghouse. <laughs> Jen and I got your back. Bye, guys. Bye.